Okay, in this video we'll take a look at definite integrals involving e to the u. Now in the previous video we did uh, integrals of e to the u, but they were all indefinite integrals. But I would suggest you guys watch that video first because it'll make this video make a little bit more sense. But anyway, in this, in this video we'll do three definite integral examples using e to the u. Now a reminder, the integral of e to the u is e to the u, so that's the formula that we're going to be using on these. So with that in mind, let's try three different problems. Okay, now in this first problem, um, what we've got is uh, the integral from 0 to 1 of e to the minus 2x dx. Now again, because this is something more complicated than just a simple x, you're going to have to use u substitution on this. So we'll start out by letting u be equal to the exponent of this e term. So that's going to get us to this. So u will be equal to minus 2x. We'll find the derivative of that just typical u substitution. So the derivative of u with respect to x would be negative 2, which means that du would be equal to negative 2 dx. Now in the u substitution, what we're going to try to remove will be this dx and turn it into a du. Well, there's the dx. You don't need the negative 2, so move the negative 2 to the other side, and you get minus 1 half du will be equal to dx. Now there's the dx you need, so this dx matches up with this dx, and your substitution will be that right there, so minus 1 half du. So again, we'll isolate the u substitution, uh, just kind of stick it in its own little box here. So there's the u sub right there. Now what that does to the problem, that will turn it into this. This will become the integral of e to the u and in place of dx, we'll put what dx is equal to, which would be minus one half du. So you got a minus one half du. Now we have to do one more thing before we go on with definite integrals, and that's also to change the limits. So right now this goes from this. The original problem was from x equals zero to x equals one, but now we want to go from u equals something to u equals something. So we also have to change the limits. So let's go ahead and do that. So the question is, when x is equal to 1, what is u equal to? So down here I'll put, when x is equal to 1, then u is equal to, and go ahead and plug a 1 into this right here. So it would be minus 2 times 1, which would be a negative 2. So when x is equal to 1, u is equal to a negative 2. Now let's get the bottom one. So when x is equal to 0, then u is equal to, now plug a 0 into this, so negative 2 times 0, which still gives you a 0. So this one's going to be 0. So there are the limits to this problem. So we'll go ahead and isolate them. So first of all, you change the u, then you change the limits. Okay, now we've got all in terms of u, we can solve it just like any other u substitution problem. So first of all, here's a negative one half, so we'll move the negative one half outside the integral. This will become the integral of e to the u du, and this goes from zero to a negative two. Now just a reminder on the formula, the integral of e to the u is just, the integral of e to the u is e to the u. So with that in mind, that gets us to negative one half, and this turns into the integral of e to the u is e to the u, and you're gonna evaluate that between zero and negative two. So that gets you to negative one half, and then in brackets here, first of all, plug in the top number and then plug in the bottom number. So e to the negative two, then plug in the bottom number, minus e to the zero. And actually that is the answer, but we can simplify it one more step here. Um, this will turn into e to the negative two minus, and anything to the zero power is one, so we'll go ahead and put a one right there. And that is going to be the solution to this problem. Now if you were to stick that on a calculator, it'll actually turn into about 0.43, so if you wanted 
a decimal answer, you could get it like that, but that's how you go about it. But anyway, use substitution on this one, and then remember to change the limits. Now on this problem, we let u be equal to the exponent to the e function, and we'll do it a little differently on the next problem. Okay, now it's another one that involves e functions, but you're going to have to approach this one a little differently. Now watch what happens. If you try to let u be equal to the exponent here, the trouble is its derivative won't get rid of the other things. So in this case, what you'll wind up having to do is to let u be equal to the entire denominator. And the reason you'll do that is when you take the derivative of the denominator, its derivative will get rid of this other thing up on top. Now to make that look right, what I'm going to do is kind of rewrite it in this form to start with. I'll make this be the integral from 0 to 1. And I'm going to take this e to the negative x right here and just move it off to the side. So this is going to be 1 over, and here is the 1 plus e to the negative x, and take this e to the negative x and just push it off the side, e to the negative x, and I've got a dx right here. Now, the reason I'm doing that is because this part right here is what I'm going to try to get rid of in u substitution. So if I let u be equal to the denominator here, then the de derivative of this will eliminate this, and that would be a good choice for u substitution. So first of all, let's do the u substitution over here. So I'll let u be equal to 1 plus e to the negative x. And what that gets me to, then find the derivative of that. So du dx. Now, the derivative of 1 is 0, and the derivative of this one, remember, it's the two-part rule. It's the original e function times the derivative of its exponent. So now I'll do this. Uh, I'll move the negative out in front, so it'll be the negative of e to the negative x, and then here's the dx here. Now again, I need e to the negative x dx. I don't need this negative, so I'll move it to the other side. So the negative of du will be equal to e to the negative x dx. So now this matches up with this, and there's my u substitution right there. So you got the u substitution taken care of. So again, we'll isolate this just to kind of keep it all by itself over here. Okay, so there is the u substitution. Okay, now just like in that last problem, we've changed the u, but we also need to change the limits because right now it goes from x equals 1 to x, or x equals 0 to x equals 1. But we want to change it to u equals something. So in the problem, right, at the moment we're down to this. This is going to give you, it'll be equal to, and like I'll put it about right here, uh, the integral, and this will be 1 over u, and then in place of this we'll put what it's equal to, which is a negative du. So it looks like that. But again, we want to change the limits from u is equal to something to u is equal to something. So Rather, next we're going to have u. So from u equals something here to u equals something up here. So to change that, let's go ahead and we'll do it down here. So first of all, um, when x is equal to the top number 1, then u would be equal to, and plug a 1 into this right here. So this is going to give you 1 plus e to the negative 1. Um, and now we'll try it for when x is equal to uh, 0. So when x is equal to 0, then u is equal to 1 plus uh, e to the 0, but e to the 0 is 1, so that would be equal to 2. So when x is equal to 0, u is going to be equal to 2. So in the function up here, you'll have this. And I think I'll stick a little box around this again just to isolate it. So we'll put a box around our limits. So here's where we found the limits here. So when x is equal to 0, um, u is equal to 2. And when x is equal to 1, 
then u is equal to 1 plus e to the negative 1. So kind of an unusual looking number. Okay, now we've got the limits right now. Now we'll just take care of the interval. So this is going to be, now first of all, I'll take this negative and bring it outside. So this would be the negative of the integral of 1 over u du. And we're going to go from 2 to 1 plus e to the negative 1. All right, that's going to be the negative of, now just a reminder, the antiderivative of 1 over u is the natural log of the absolute value of u evaluated from 2 to 1 plus e to the negative 1. So now, go ahead and plug in the top number. So we'll plug this top thing in. It will be the natural log of 1 plus e to the negative 1 minus the natural log of 2 and put brackets around that. And actually that will turn out to be the it's kind of unusual looking answer but that's going to be the answer to the problem right there. Now if you were to stick that on a calculator just to figure out what it would turn into it'll actually turn into about 0.38 would be an approximate decimal answer. Anyway, that's the solution. So on this one, you let u be equal to the entire denominator, and this one actually turned into a 1 over u problem, which involves a natural log. Uh, so there's a look at a second example. Now the third example looks like this. Um, it's got some trigonometry into it. And again, the choice of u here, and again, just you pick your u so that its derivative gets rid of the other thing. So let's look at some possibilities. Um, if you were to let u be equal to this e to the x, the trouble is this e to the x does not get rid of the sine. So you might try to let u be equal to the sine. The trouble is the derivative of the sine is the cosine, so that doesn't help you. So your last possibility is to let u be equal to <clears throat> this argument of the trig function e to the x right here. And that one will work because the derivative of that e to the x will get rid of this e to the x, so that would be a good choice. So, first of all, I'm going to do this. I'll go ahead and rewrite it as this. The integral from 0 to 1, and I'm going to take this e to the x and move it to the other side. So I'll make this be the sine of e to the x. And again, take this e to the x and move it over here. So that gives you an e to the x dx. Now, as far as the u substitution goes, this is what I'm going to try to get rid of in my u substitution. And I'll do that by letting u be equal to the argument of the trig function. So let's try that and off we go on this one. So again, just u substitution. So we'll let u be equal to e to the x. Now the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. So that gets you to du would be equal to e to the x dx. So in this case, the derivative is fairly easy. Now you needed an e to the x dx, you got an e to the x dx. So the u substitution is just going to be a du. So it's a fairly simple u substitution. And again, we'll isolate this. So there's the u substitution right there. Okay, so what that gets you to in the problem looks like this. Um, Let's see, I'll make this be the integral. And now it turns into the sine of u. And in place of e to the x dx, put what it's equal to, which is just strictly a du. Okay, now you still have to change the limits. So remember, this goes from x equals 0 to x equals 1. And we want to change it from u equals something to u equals something. So we have to change it from x limits to u limits. So let's go ahead and do that. So when, and we'll start with the top one, when x is equal to 1, then u is equal to e to the first power, which would just be e. So this one's going to be an e right here. Then when, when x is equal to 0, then u is equal to e to the 0 
but anything to the zero power is just one, so this will be a one right there. So you've changed your limits. So we'll go ahead and isolate this limits here. So here were the limits. And in this little section here, you took care of the limits to the problem. Okay, now it's just a matter of solving what's left over. So uh, we want to find the integral from one to e of the sine of u du. And the integral of the sine is the negative of the cosine, so this will turn into the negative of the cosine of u evaluated from 1 to e. So that will turn into the negative of the cosine, and go ahead and plug in the e, and then minus uh, the negative of the cosine of 1. And that is going to be the solution to the problem right there. Now again, like the other ones, if you were to stick that on a calculator, an approximate decimal answer would be about 1.4. Five. Uh, but this is an example where even though the integral involved e to the x, it actually turns into a trig integral. So you have to kind of watch out. We'll come back through it. On this third problem, it involved e to the x, but it involved a trig uh, integral. On the second problem, it involved e to the x, but it turned into a 1 over u integral. And then finally, on the first one, it started as an e to the x, and it involved u substitution, but it stayed an e to the x problem. So you kind of have to watch each one, and your choice of u makes a big difference on this. So anyway, there are three examples of uh, integrals involving e to the u, but definite integrals.